Good afternoon, it's David Schlotthauer with a tropical update on Tropical Storm Brett for Tuesday afternoon, June the 20th. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making any decisions regarding Tropical Storm Brett, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the best information for where you are. Now, if you're new and you like these detailed tropical updates, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and leave an awesome comment so you can get all my updates. So I'm going to move forward. Forward and I'm going to continue updating you all on Tropical Storm Brett as long as it remains a threat over the Lesser Antilles, then eventually possibly in the Greater Antilles by the weekend. So we can see here a wide view on the satellite imagery provided by TropicalTidbits.com. There is Tropical Storm Brett now 45 miles an hour, and we have another tropical wave that is shortly behind Brett that has an 80% chance of tropical development. We're actually gonna be talking about 93L a little bit more in this video, but it will be towards the end of the video instead, and we'll mainly be talking about Tropical Storm Brett. So this is a closer zoomed in view and we can see that the system has changed a little bit in organization today. We did see an exposure to the low level center. See the swirly motion right there that has now been blocked by some deep explosive convection over the center today. However, it does appear that the deep convection is still slightly just to the east of the, the low level center, which means there is just a hair, just a little bit of shear that is impacting the system. We're also taking note here in recent satellite imagery, we're also seeing an outflow boundary here, a huge collapse of thunderstorms on the western flank uh, or an outer band that is of Brett, which indicates there is dry air that is going to soon impact the system, probably within the next 24 hours or so. And we can see semblance of that with a lot of thunderstorm collapsing going on with a lot of outflow. See these outflow arcing bands, which indicate a lot of dry air is out there ahead of Brett. And we're also seeing shear that is generally out of the westerly direction, which will also soon impact Brett's structure. Here's a look at the water vapor satellite imagery, and we can see that, yep, there is a lot of dark gray. Now, it might not seem that there is, because we have a lot of this cirrus outflow, these milky white cirrus going out, which means the system is breathing pretty good right now. Actually, probably with the, one of the best outflow futures that we have had in quite some time. But what we don't understand or what you might not understand is we do have westerly shear that is encroaching underneath this cirrus outflow. So while it might look like, oh yeah, this is a pretty favorable environment, it truly is because we're seeing deep convection popping in the center, but we also have dry air and shear underneath that is kind of um, kind of sneaking underneath this outflow. And that is also partaking in why we're not seeing substantial organization with Brett thus far. So here's a look at the NHC um, graphic, not graphic, but text discussion. There's a lot to read here, so I'm only going to focus in on this part, the middle paragraph here. Um, there will be a full description on their text discussion in the video below, okay, in the description, okay? So despite upper-level cirrus clouds radiating away from the storm in all quadrants, it still appears that there is some westerly shear affecting the uh, system below the cirrus outflow layer with what we just talked about, right? We saw what we're seeing that outflow, but we got that westerly flow kind of sneaking right underneath it, right? Global model forecasts suggest that this setup will continue for the next couple of days, but it shouldn't be strong enough to prevent some additional strengthening while Brett approaches the Lesser Antilles. The NHC intensity forecast is very close to the HCCA and IVCN consensus aids through 60 hours and continues to show Brett crossing the islands as a 55 knot tropical storm about 65 miles an hour uh, uh, at just after that time, Brett will be approaching an upper-level trough located over the eastern Caribbean Sea, and that future is likely to cause more significant deep layer shear over the storm by Friday. But because uh, because of the increase in shear, all of the global models show Brett opening up into an open wave trough by day four. 
So again, we're not going to see much left with Brett once it gets to the islands and not too much after that. So we're probably going to blend things out in videos ahead. We're going to start talking more about 93L and you're going to hear lesser of Brett going forward. So here's a look at the key messages. Even so, we are talking about a tropical storm. It does not mean it's not going to be a big deal. We are still expected to see a lot of flooding, very heavy rainfall, strong winds, and dangerous waves along the coast of these islands. We could even see life-threatening storm surge as well as water spouts. So just because, again, it's a tropical storm, do not... Um, think it's not going to be that bad because we're still expecting some pretty significant impacts. Given the uncertainty in the track and intensity forecast, it is too early to specify the location magnitude of where Brett's associated hazards could occur. A tropical storm watch has been issued for Barbados and additional watches are likely for other islands within the Lesser Antilles later tonight. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you have your phone ready. If you get a tropical storm watch, that means you could have tropical storm conditions within 36 to 48 hours speaking of that we have a 40 to 50 percent chance of tropical storm force winds over barbados and some of the lesser antilly islands so just keep that in mind if you are on uh, dominica if you're on saint uh, kitts and nevis please be aware there is going to be tropical storm like conditions possible by thursday night and then in the open caribbean by the time we go into friday night but no issues yet for Jamaica, and because the models have trended further south, we're probably not, you're not going to see a whole lot of impacts. Maybe a couple of showers, and that's all about it. This is going to get really decimated once it moves into the Caribbean. So here's a look at the latest NHC forecast. Again, this is going right towards the west. I mean, almost due west. I wouldn't even be surprised if we still see nudges to the south with this track forecast because... If it's going to be weaker than what's forecasted, then it might just head more further south of this cone. That's why the uncertainty is still quite big here. It could still go north of the center there, or it could still go south of where the points uh, where the forecast point actually is. So maybe um, if you are on Aruba, could still get impacted there. Even on some of the islands there of Venezuela, just be aware of that. So there are tropical storm watches um, for this reasoning, okay? And so please take um, the NHC seriously uh, with their uh, products. All right, so here's a look at the European model. We're only going to be looking at the Euro model because some of the hurricane models are right on par with the Euro. Um, and that's to make the video a little shorter. So we actually have a little bit of time to talk about 93L as that could be somewhat of a threat to some of the northern Lesser Antilles like U.S. and British Virgin Islands. So this look at the Euro for um, this afternoon and we can see there is our system right off the side of the screen. As we put this forward, you can see how the Euro does think that it is going to strengthen pretty good here by Thursday early morning, June the 22nd. We have a pretty intense looking tropical storm here, probably 60 maybe 65 miles an hour on the approach to the southern lesser antilles it's going to get steered by this ridge that is to the north at 850 millibars now if the system is able to gain strength a little quicker it might gain more latitude a little faster but i would say a direct impact on puerto rico and the northern lesser antilles seems to be unlikely at the moment because it's kind of too late for this to move northward at uh, basically because there's no trough systems moving faster than this trough up here is able to drop down and capture the system a little bit better we let's go forward here into thursday night and we can see it crosses those islands so just be aware tropical storm force winds heavy rainfall flooding um storm surge breaking large breaking waves are certainly a likelihood and once this gets into the Caribbean, I'm telling you, it's going to be a shred hammer here over the Caribbean as that shear really encroaches onto the system and lots of dry air actually take place. And it's barely anything here uh, by the time we go into day five. So here's a look at the deep layer moisture plot. Um, the brown colors here indicate that there's a lot of dry air, while greener colors indicate there's more moisture in the deep layers. So when we go forward here, as you can see, the shear, like we talked about on satellite, it's out there, it's out ahead of the system, it will soon impact the structure. 
Give it maybe another 24 hours, maybe a little more than that, and we're going to see a very lopsided system. A lot of the moisture well-weighted on the eastern side of the system. You, If you want a strengthening system, you do not want shear. You, you, shear is a bad thing for systems. A good thing if you hate hurricanes or tropical systems when they get strong. So this would be good news for the islands that it's not going to get as strong as what we first saw, but still in the mark of about maybe a mid-grade tropical storm. Now, when it approaches these islands, you can see it is very lopsided. I mean, almost decoupling at this point by Thursday night and early Friday. And then you can see going forward um, by early Saturday, there's the moisture still over the island. So even so, you're not getting hit with tropical storm force winds. The rain could follow well behind uh, Brett as it moves further west here at a quick pace. And then you can see the remnants of that moisture really just getting devoided. And this system is pretty naked all the way out to day four and day five. So once it gets past kind of north of Venezuela here, it really is going to decouple because of 30 to 40 knot shear that is going to just kind of rip it into smithereens. So here's a look now at the intensity forecast from Tropical Tidbits on Brett. And most of the models are right in that line. So my prediction right now is that Tropical Storm Brett will um, be a 65 mile an hour system. So I'm right with the NHC with that. I still think we're going to see some strengthening over the next 24 to 36 hours before the system encounters dry air and shear. And the system will likely begin to gradually weaken. More quicker weakening towards the end of the forecast as it encounters even stronger shear and drier air. I don't know why the HWFI model is an outlier, but it better fix itself because we're very, very, there's a 1% chance we're going to have a Cat 1 or a Cat 3 hurricane at this point. And the majority of the hurricane models are well within tropical storm range. So we're not anticipating a hurricane anymore like we thought just yesterday. But it doesn't matter if it's a hurricane or if it's not. The impacts will just be as bad. You can't discern very much between 65 and 75 if that makes sense. So tropical... Storm Brett, the track guidance is tightly clustered, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. If you are on Barbados, you are going to get impacted likely with this. We're talking strong winds, heavy rain, storm surge, and flooding. Even portions of uh, Dominica and Martinique, you could get impacted as well with tropical storm force winds or tropical depression force in the next three or so days. So that's a look at the spaghetti plot. Now, we're going to uh, zoom out again, and we're going to now focus on Invest 93L uh, because that is a bit of a concern, and it has an 80% chance. So it has grabbed enough of my attention that we're going to spend a little more time on this. So it's this area that is behind um, Tropical Storm Brett, which is out ahead, we um, kind of, let's let's uh, move on actually let's uh, do a closer zoom in view on that so here's a look at invest 93l and as we go forward you can see this is loading so i just don't want it to kind of bother you guys um as it's loading here on the screen uh let's do this so you can see uh, as we go forward here, the latest satellite imagery does indicate that the system is largely devoided from any convection, but we are still, we're definitely seeing westerly winds here, so a broadening in the circulation here. We might start seeing a focus point of that vorticity somewhere over here where we might get the deeper convection with Invest 93L. Here's a look at the NHC. They have an 80% chance of tropical formation. This will be updated in about 30 minutes. I guarantee it's going to either be 80 or 90%. It won't matter very much because there is a high chance for this to become a tropical depression or tropical storm. And most of the guidance does indicate that too. When we look at tropical tidbits here on um, Invest 93L, it is going to be clearly uh, a, a maybe a tropical depression at the very most, maybe a tropical storm later on. There's a lot of model agreement here. Now, the good thing at the moment is none of the models aim this towards the Lesser Antilles, but indirect impacts like um, high waves, maybe some gusty winds, maybe some outer banding futures around the system are certainly a possibility. So just because the center does not impact you directly, you may get indirect impacts. 
So how strong could 93L get? Well, it could become a tropical storm within the next two to three days. Some, uh, Most of the models do indicate that. Only uh, one model at this point, of course, it's going to be the HWFI model going crazy again, indicating a low to mid-grade hurricane, which again, I strongly disagree. My intensity forecast is going to call this to become a tropical storm within three to four days with winds that could peak between 40 to 50 miles an hour. As always, if you found this video very helpful, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, like the video, and also share this video with your family and friends on social media. That is going to do it with this tropical update on Tropical Storm Brett and on Invest 93L for Tuesday afternoon, June the 20th, 2023. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll be back in the office tomorrow with another tropical update on Brett and 93L.